Let's begin a new series of problems, uh, this one involving power cycles, which will introduce us to the second law of thermodynamics. A power cycle operating at steady state receives energy by heat transfer at a rate Q dot H at TH equals 1800 Kelvin and rejects energy by heat transfer to a cold reservoir at a rate Q dot C at TC equals 600 Kelvin. For each of the following cases, determine whether the cycle operates reversibly, operates irreversibly, or is impossible. And then we're given uh, four cases to evaluate, each with different inputs. But before we get to them, let's look at this power cycle schematic. The power cycle uh, is our system. The boundary line here is just around the power cycle. And inside this power cycle, I mean, it could be, a, say, an electric power plant, you know, with boilers and turbines and uh, the other hardware associated with the power cycle. And it's receiving uh, energy via heat transfer from a high temperature source. And it rejects um, what it cannot convert into work. It rejects to a uh, cold temperature reservoir. Now, a reservoir is simply a source or sink for energy that uh, does not change temperatures no matter how much energy you add or subtract from it. So let's talk about how we're going to uh, solve this problem. First, let's define reversibly, irreversibly, or impossible. Let's start with an irreversible process. An irreversible process is a process that contains irreversibilities. And irreversibilities are things like friction and minor pressure leaks and small heat transfers and other real world uh, liabilities or losses. And so all real processes are irreversible processes. Now, a reversible process contains no such irreversibilities. And we can't build one because we would have to suspend the laws of nature for a reversible uh, a power cycle ever to actually take place. But we can imagine a reversible power cycle and we do imagine them as a limit state of what is possible between um, the temperatures of our uh, hot and cold reservoirs. An impossible power cycle is one where the efficiency or performance of the power cycle exceeds that of a reversible cycle. In other words, it exceeds the maximum theoretical uh, performance. And that is how we're going to evaluate this. We're going to compare the efficiency of each of these uh, four situations for a power cycle that we're given in this problem. We're going to compare that to the maximum theoretical performance of this power cycle. And if it's, uh, if the actual calculated efficiency is less than the maximum theoretical efficiency, well, then it's certainly possible. It could be a real uh, power cycle. And so it would operate irreversibly. If the um, efficiency we calculate is greater than the maximum theoretical efficiency, then it's impossible. And if they were exactly the same, that is to say, we calculated the efficiency of this power cycle to be exactly that of a reversible cycle, then it would be uh, the situation presented to us would be that of a reversible cycle. And although we can imagine it, we cannot build it. So let's get started here. Let's write an energy balance and I'm going to do it two different ways. The first energy balance, uh, let's just write it in terms of energy. And this is for a closed system. Now, you may think of a power cycle as an open system, and certainly inside the system boundary here, it is most likely an open system. I mean, if we have things like boilers and steam and um, uh, turbines and generators, uh, yes, that that's an open system. But that takes place inside the boundary of our system. Notice here that nothing crosses our system boundary except the energy transferred by heater work. So this is uh, this power cycle is a closed system and everything outside the system boundary is part of the surroundings, including the thermal reservoirs. So our energy balance would be simply that delta E is equal to zero is Q minus W. And it's equal to zero because this is a cycle. The cycle is a series of processes that end 
um, it ends where it begins. And so no energy can be accumulated or dissipated. Delta E must be zero in a cycle. Well, Q is really the sum of all the Q terms. And we have two Q terms here. We have uh, heat transfer from the high temperature reservoir and heat transfer to the cold reservoir. Well, heat transfer from the hot reservoir is bringing energy into our uh, system and therefore is positive. And so we have zero is equal to a positive QH. QC, on the other hand, is removing energy from the uh, uh, cycle versus uh, via heat transfer. And so that's going to be negative. So our term Q here in this uh, original energy balance becomes QH minus QC. And then we have minus W, of course. Rearranging, we get W is equal QH minus QC. Now we could have written this closed system energy balance as a rate balance. And that would be that dE dt is zero. It's Q dot minus W dot. Now why is dE dt zero? Because we're analyzing it as at a steady state operation. And in steady state, uh, all properties are constant with time, including energy. So because it's steady state, we have dE dt is zero, and it's Q dot minus W dot. And we can make the same argument here. Q dot is really Q dot H minus Q dot C. It's the sum of these two, uh, paying attention to uh, sign conventions. And we end up with W dots Q dot H minus Q dot C. Now, you, that's an obvious uh, solution because all we have to do is uh, take the original equation um, um, in terms of energy and divide each of the, you know, the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation by time. And we would get this W dot equals Q dot H minus Q dot C. All right, we said we were going to evaluate efficiencies. What is the efficiency of a power cycle? Well, the efficiency is what we want divided by what it costs us to get it. And what do we want from a power cycle? Well, we want the work output. What does it cost us to get it? The heat input from our high temperature reservoir. So the power cycle efficiency is just the work output divided by the heat, potent, heat input, which is QH. But from our energy balance, work is QH minus QC. So the efficiency becomes QH minus QC over QH, which we can rewrite as one minus QC over QH. Now, this QC over QH can be energy terms or energy rate terms, it doesn't matter. Now, that will tell us how to evaluate the efficiency of the cycle that were presented in this problem. We wanna compare, compare that to the performance of a reversible cycle. Well, it turns out that this ratio QC over QH for a reversible uh, process and only for a reversible process is equivalent to TC over TH. So we can therefore write that uh, the maximum theoretical performance, which is that of a reversible process, is not one minus QC over QH, but it can be written as one minus TC over TH. So this is the equation that we'll use to evaluate the maximum theoretical performance, which is that of a reversible cycle. And when we want to uh, calculate the uh, efficiency of the actual cycle, we can use this equation here, which is one minus QC over QH. So now let's calculate the maximum theoretical efficiency of a power cycle that takes place between uh, these two thermal reservoirs. And what we saw earlier is that the efficiency, or in this case, the maximum theoretical efficiency, is just a fun function of the temperatures of the hot and cold reservoir. It has nothing to do with the uh, details of the power cycle. And this would be for a reversible cycle, which will give us our maximum theoretical efficiency. And so it is one minus TC over uh, TH, and that's one minus 600 degrees Kelvin divided by 1800 degrees Kelvin. And for any process taking place between these two thermal reservoirs, the maximum theoretical uh, efficiency of, of a power cycle is 0.667. Now to look at our first case. We're given that Q dot H is 500 kilowatts and Q dot C is 100 kilowatts. 
Well, this is an easy problem to solve. We know the efficiency is the power output divided by the rate of heat input, which reduces to just one minus Q dot C over Q dot H. We calculate then that the efficiency of this particular power cycle is one minus 100 kilowatts over 500 kilowatts, which is an efficiency of uh, 0.8 or 80%. Well, this is greater than the maximum theoretical possible between these two thermal reservoirs. Therefore, this particular case is impossible. Let's look at another case. We're given that Q dot H is 500 kilowatts. Uh, w dot for the cycle is 250 kilowatts. And Q dot C is 200 kilowatts. Well, this case is overspecified. We only need two inputs and we have three. So before I try to calculate efficiencies, or uh, I'm going to calculate, um, I'm going to run this all through an energy balance and make sure everything works. So in our energy balance, we have W dot is Q dot H minus Q dot C, which is 500 kilowatts minus 200 kilowatts. That gives us a power output of 300 kilowatts. But this case states that the power output is 250 kilowatts. So there's a discrepancy here that uh, I have no way around. And so I'm simply going to state that this case is impossible. In case C, we find that W dot is 350 kilowatts and Q dot C is 150 kilowatts. So we know that W dot is Q dot H minus Q dot C. We can rearrange and solve for Q dot H. And that's going to be W dot plus uh, Q dot C. So Q dot H is equal to the sum of our two inputs, which is uh, 350 kilowatts and 150 kilowatts. That gives us Q dot H at 500 kilowatts. Now with that value, we can calculate the efficiency, which is just W dot over Q dot H. And that is 350 kilowatts divided by 500 kilowatts. It gives us a uh, power cycle efficiency of 70%. Well, once again, this is greater than the maximum theoretical efficiency of 0.667. So this case is impossible. And then our last case, we're given Q dot H is 500 kilowatts and Q dot C is 200 kilowatts. And going back to our basic equation for um, a power cycle efficiency, which is one minus Q dot C over Q dot H, uh, I have one minus 200 kilowatts over 500 kilowatts, calculating an efficiency of uh, 60%. And this is less than our maximum theoretical uh, uh, efficiency. So that means this is possible. It doesn't say that it's true. It just says that it's possible. And uh, all possible or real cycles are irreversible.